Hey guys, and welcome back in this third video about technical drawings. So we already made a tool for measurement lines, another one to indicate angles. And this time we're going to make a third one, which will help us indicate the diameters. So this tool is mainly composed of two elements. On one side, you have this horizontal line with its own animation slider. We're going to have this checkbox. So we can control whether we want the animation to go from left to right or start from the center. Here we have different controls uh, to change the line length, its thickness, the individual length of the lines. And finally, we got the separation between the lines. So depending on the length we define at first, the line is going to adjust. Then you have the arrow that indicates the diameter. Here we have some controls as well. We got the animation slider. We can choose to have just the little line at the bottom or the full indication with the arrow. The circle we have here is just kind of a landmark to see the real diameter. So for example, if the diameter has a certain uh, thickness, we could adjust the thickness over here. We're going to be able to change the radius depending on the diameter. We can easily change the angle. What's really interesting here is the text is going to be on the right or on the left, depending on the angle that you choose. We can play around with the length of that line. Same goes for the little extension. We can change the text size, the offset and the arrow size. So in this video, we're going to just be making this line. So it's going to be used to make some uh, crossings like that or the middle of a piece like this one. So for those who might be interested, this little window here is a free software called Pure Ref. So this allows you to have a little window, which is always on top of the other softwares. Here it's C4D, but this can be useful for Photoshop as well. With the middle mouse click, you can just move around the elements in the window. By right clicking, you can just move the window around. Using the mouse wheel, you can zoom in, zoom out in the window. You can drop as many images you want in there. So this is really handy for references. So let's dive in. We're going to be making this line from scratch. So first off, we're going to add a new null. We call it dotted line. I'm going to add an Expresso tag to this one. I'm going to add a new user data. I'm going to call this first one line length. It's going to be a float slider. We want reels. For the step, I'm going to set this to 0.001. It goes from 0 to 1000. For the default value, I'm going to set this to 50. And we're going to need a second user data, which will be the thickness. The default value will be 1. I reduce the max to be 100. The line will simply be a plane. I call this one line. I import the null and the plane. We only need one by one segment. I'm going to import the width and height. On this one, I'm going to import the length and the thickness. I'm going to connect the thickness to the height and the length to the width. So this will be the line. I double click in the materials to make a new one. I'm going to uncheck color, set the luminance to white. We don't want no reflection. I'm going to set the length to 200. And in this big line, we're going to cut out some chunks. I'm adding a new cube. The first one will be short. I control drag it. This one will be long. I'm going to set both of them in the cloner. From here, we're going to need two more user datas. I control drag this one. I call this one line one with a default value of 10. I control drag once more. This will be line two with a default value of 50. I select the node and change its color to green. I import it once more. We're going to need the cubes. We're going to change the cloner to be a grid array. We only need the one clone on Y. I'm going to hit NB to show the wireframe. So on Y, we just want one as well as on Z. I'm going to import the thickness. 
I'm going to import line one and line two. I'm going to right click optimize and I'm going to set the color of this one to green. I'm going to select the short cube. I'm going to import the size values separately. So X, Y, and Z. To make things easier, I'm going to just control drag the first one and I'm just going to drag the long in there. So this way we already have the values on the node. I'm going to move the line one up. It's going to be connected to the short. So the line thickness, it's this one on the Z axis. We're going to need a math node. I'm going to connect the thickness and here we're going to multiply this by two. Multiply, we're going to type in two. We connect this one to size Y and size Z. Same here, size Y and size Z. So we have cubes that are just a little bit bigger than the line. And for the length, we're going to just connect directly line one to size X and line two to size X in this one. I can now increase the number here and we're gonna use this to cut inside the main line. We're just gonna keep the parts of the line that's inside the cloner. To do so, we're gonna use a boolean. I'm gonna import the line and the cloner and we're gonna set the type to intersect. Here you can see that we just keep the intersection between the line and the cubes. To keep things consistent when we add some clones, we want the mode to be per step. So we're gonna keep the same distance between cubes. We're gonna right click on the count. We're gonna go to user interface and show subchannels because we just want to import the count X. We're gonna do the same on the size. We're gonna add in a new user data, which will be the separation. We're gonna set the default to 10. We want the number of clones and the spacing to be adjusting to the length of the line. We're gonna import the cloner. I import the count X and size X as well. I import the main null. Here I want the length and the separation. So I connect the separation to size X. Here I can change the spacing between the cubes. If you want the count to adjust to the length, I'm going to import a new math node. And we're going to divide the line length by the separation value. I set this to divide and I connect it to the count. Now, depending on the separation, the number of clones is going to adjust. And if I now increase the length of the line, the spacing between the cubes is going to stay the same. If I activate the Boolean, this is the result. Once more, we're going to add a new user data. And this will be the animation. We want a float slider. We want percentages as units. I set this step to 001. On frame 0, I'm going to set a keyframe and a second one at frame 25. I'm going to hit Ctrl D and change the frame rate to 25. On the animation slider, I'm going to right click. I go to animation, show F curve. I select both keyframes and set this to linear. So now I'm going to set this one to green. I'm going to move things a little bit. We want another copy of the dotted line. I set this one to green. And here I'm going to import the animation slider. We're going to need the line length. I import a range mapper. So we're going to use this one to take care of the animation. I connect the animation here. I import the line and its X position. I'm going to add a new math node. The output is going from 0 to 1. And I'm going to multiply the range mapper output with the line length. I set this to multiply. Connect this to the position. Here we should have something moving. Okay, so this is because my second keyframe should be at 100. So it's animating, but not in the right direction. It's disappearing and we wanted this to appear. So to correct that, we're just going to add a new math node. 
I connect this to the first input and we want to subtract the line length. I set this to subtract. And now we have the line appearing, which bugs me a little bit are the points of the cloner here. We could just add the cloner in a connect object. So this doesn't change nothing. It's just gonna hide the cloner points. Now we could go to the range mapper and control click in the spline to add two points and then maybe change the shape of the spline to have something like this, uh, which makes the animation more interesting. I want to adjust my values here. What I would like to add at this point is being able to have the animation starting from the center. I'm going to select the null object and I'm going to go to manage user data, add a new one. I'm going to set this just below the animation. This time I want a boolean and I call this center. I add another one that I just move below the center. This time it's going to be a separator. So this adds a little line between the controls for the animation and the parameters of the line. We're going to change things a little bit here to have the animation coming from the center. We're going to change the width of the line. So before we were animating the position. So we're going to need a second version of this. So instead of taking care of the width in here, I'm going to delete this port and this one. We're going to do that here. We're going to have two versions. We're going to have a first one with the width that stays the same and the second one where the width is animated. So on this one, we have the position that's animated, but we want the width to stay the same. And for the second one, we want the position to stay the same. We're going to animate the width. I'm going to right click and disable this one for a moment. So it's this one that's going to set the position and the width for the line. We're going to need a constant. So for this one, we want the X position to be zero. So we connect this one to the position. The constant has a default value of zero. This makes sure that when we switch from the second one to this one, the position goes back to zero. And then for the width, we already have that over here. So we're going to connect this directly. And now the animation starts from the center. Last thing, I import the line. We want to be able to switch between them. We're going to need the center checkbox. So if I connect this to our result node, we want the calculation to be animation refresh. When it's checked, the result is one. When it's unchecked, the result will be zero. I'm going to right click on this one and enable it. So for now, uh, both are active. That's not what we want. To enable or disable a node, here we have something that's called on. So we want this on both nodes. I move it up. So this value is a checkbox. Uh, it's going to be one or zero. So we could directly use this center value, which is one or zero. When it's checked, we want this to be on the length. So I'm going to connect this directly to the first line and we want the opposite on the second one. So once again, I'm going to use a math node. I connect the center to the second input. Here I'm going to type in one and I'm going to set this one to subtract. So this is giving us one minus this value. If I copy the result, you're going to see that the first is at zero and the second one is one. And when I check the center, it's going to invert both results. This is going to be connected to the second line. If I uncheck the center, the animation goes from left to right. And when it's checked, the animation starts from the center. So this was for the line. In the next video, we're going to do the diameter.